my name is Lucy Lewis from Lone Star. I am more than excited today to be here with founding and senior rabbi of Ikar and author of The Amain Effect, Rabbi Sharon Browse. Thank you, Lucy. So happy to be here with you. Thank you. So first, I just want to say thank you for being here. And also, I was wondering if you could please describe to us what your engagement with Judaism looked like when you were a teenager. And how do you believe that that has influenced you into the Jew that you are today? Oh, great question. I was social action vice president of NIFTI. I was, um, I was in JIFTI. I grew up in New Jersey. And so I was in the Jersey region and got really involved. And um, it was a really central part of my life, actually. Like, very strong friendships, um, really pretty deeply involved in the youth movement space. And it helped me... It helped me figure out how, who I wanted to be in the world and how I wanted my Judaism to manifest in the work that I want, wanted to do, trying to build a more just society. Wow. So along with that, what steps did you take to become such a successful advocate for social justice? Oh, um, well, I went to rabbinical school ultimately because I realized at some point in through a kind of an epiphany that I had when I was studying in Jerusalem my junior year abroad, that all of the agents of social change that I admired most were people who had a faith narrative that was really driving their activism. And I realized that I also had a faith narrative, which was the narrative of the exodus from Egypt, the idea that we were a people that was enslaved and humiliated and degraded and we moved from enslavement to freedom from darkness to light from narrowness to expansiveness and that the work of redemption was not done yet and it making this connection it was a kind of um revelatory experience for me i realized that part of the reason that i was probably so drawn to the work of trying to trying to end exploitation and help um, people live with dignity in the world was because it was actually part of my, it was part of my own Jewish story. Um, and it was actually not just a collect, not just a collective communal story, but it was actually a faith story, which is something I hadn't really thought um, so much about. I hadn't put the pieces together like that before. So on the top, on the topic of revolutionary. You took a leap of faith when quitting your job to start ECAR. So what advice would you give Jewish teenagers around the world mm. who want to make an impact positively on the, this world? You know, I had this moment where I realized that I, I had moved to Los Angeles from New York City. I was meeting the most interesting, creative, brilliant young Jews, and none of them were going to synagogue. And it just felt like we were losing a whole generation of people who, um, who were spiritually hungry and yearning for connection and community and ritual and maybe even God, but not looking for it in the, in the kind of conventional institutional spaces. And I thought, if I don't take this risk right now and try to build this community, I will never know if I could have done something differently. And so, um, yeah, so it was a big risk. I had, at the time, um, I was in my 20s. I had my, um, my oldest child was six months old. And, I, and it was terrifying because, it would, you know, I, I had to walk away from, uh, from my position in a school where I was working, but I really believed in this vision. And one very wise uh, friend advised me, you know, if you set out to do this and you give it everything you've got and you fail, so then you'll go get a job in a more conventional space. But if you don't try, you'll just never know. And I was so moved by that. And I just, I really feel... Um, in our tradition, Rav Cook says, um, the whole world stands on great dreams. And so if we don't dream great dreams, um, we will never be able to advance any of the critical conversations of our time. And it's about dreaming the dreams and then actually doing the work of trying to implement them. And I just felt in this case, I had to take that step. So my advice would be that we have to dream. We have to be willing to dream and to imagine a different kind of Jewish future, a different kind of future for this planet, a different kind of future for the world, and then to actually take the steps, to take the risks, to try to realize those dreams in our lifetime. Beautiful. In a TED Talk a couple years ago, you spoke about reclaiming religion in a way that's both contemporary and relevant to our everyday lives. How do you balance maintaining the traditions of Judaism while also living a modern life? 
it's exactly my connection to and my commitment to Jewish tradition and ritual that I think that fuel the way that I live in this world in this time. And so on one hand, it definitely feels like I have, you know, two feet in two different worlds, or I have both feet in two different worlds um, at all times. But, um, but it's because I so deeply live in our Jewish traditions that I, that I'm able to engage uh, in, in the world as it is in the hopes of realizing the world as it could be. So one of the core teachings that I'm so moved by is when the Torah says, that six days a week you do all the work of this world. And then on the seventh day, that day is a day for holiness. That is a day for dreaming great audacious dreams and for connecting with our loved ones and connecting with the best of who we are. And there's sort of a rhythm that's set up between living in this world and living deeply in the dreamscape. And, um, and that rhythm guides my life. I mean, I, Shabbat is a lifesaver for me. And, um, and every time I re-encounter Shabbat, I remember the dream that will then go on and fuel the rest of the week for me. Thank you so much, Rabbi Sharon Browse, for being here today. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Lucy. Bye, y'all.